In the House of the Dragon adaptation, Lord Lionel Strong said something interesting. King Jaehaerys ruled over half a century of peace while his children drove him to the edge of madness. His daughters in particular. One of those daughters was Viserra Targaryen, a fiery Targaryen who was as beautiful as the gods. In this video, we are going to go over the full life of this vivacious character. In 71 AC, the queen gave birth to her 10th child and 6th daughter, the beautiful Viserra. Like her sister Sarah, Viserra had a will of her own as well, but she never screamed and certainly never cried. Sly was one word used to describe her, vain was another. Viserra was beautiful, all men agreed, blessed with deep purple eyes and silver gold hair of a true Targaryen, with flawless white skin, fine features, and a grace that was somehow eerie and unsettling in one so young. When one stammering young squire told her she was a goddess, she agreed. In 86 AC, Queen Alison announced the betrothal of her daughter Viserra, 15 years of age, to Theomor Manderly, the fierce old lord of White Harbor. The marriage would do much and more to tie the realm together by uniting one of the great houses of the north to the Iron Throne, the king declared. Lord Theomor had won great renown as a warrior in his youth and had proved himself a canny lord under whose rule White Harbor had prospered greatly. Queen Alison was very fond of him as well, remembering the warm welcome he had given her during her first visit to the north. His lordship had outlived four wives, however, and while still a doughty fighter, he had grown very stout which did little to recommend him to Princess Viserra. She had a different man in mind. Even as a little girl, Viserra had been the most beautiful of the queen's daughters. Great lords, famous knights, and callow boys had danced attendance on her all her life, feeding her vanity until it became a raging fire. Her great delight in life was playing one boy off against the other, goading them into foolish quest and contest. To win her favor for a joust, she made admiring squires swim the Blackwater Rush, climb the Tower of the Hand, or set free all the ravens in the rookery. Once, she took six boys to the dragon pit and told them she would give her maidenhead to whoever put his head in a dragon's mouth. But the gods were good that day, and the dragon keepers put an end to that. No squire was ever going to win Viserra, Queen Alison knew. Not her heart, and certainly not her maidenhead. She was far too sly a child to go down the same path as her sister Sarah. She has no interest in kissing games nor boys, the queen told Jaehaerys. She plays with them as she used to play with their puppies, but she would no more lie with one than lie with a dog. She aims much higher at Sarah. I have seen the way she preens and prances around Balon. That is the husband she desires, and not for love of him. She wants to be the queen. Prince Balon was 14 years older than Viserra, 29 to her 15, but older lords had married younger maids as she well knew. It had been two years since Princess Alyssa had died, yet Balon had shown no interest in any other woman. He married one sister, why not another, Viserra told her closest friend, the empty-headed Beatrice Butterwell. I am much prettier than Alyssa ever was. You saw her. She had a broken nose. If the princess was intent on marrying her brother, the queen was equally determined to prevent it. Her answer was Lord Manderley and White Harbor. Theo is a good man, Alison told her daughter. A wise man with a kind heart and a good head on his shoulders. His people love him. The princess was not persuaded. If you like him so much, mother, you should marry him, she said before running to her father to complain. Jaehaerys offered her no solace. It's a good match, he told her before explaining the importance of drawing the north closer to the Iron Throne. Marriages were the queen's domain in any case, he said. He never interfered in such matters. Frustrated, Viserra next turned to her brother Balon in hopes of rescue, if court gossip can be believed. Slipping past his guards into his bedchamber one night, she disrobed and waited for him, making free with the prince's wine while she lingered. When Prince Balon finally appeared, he found her drunk and naked in his bed and sent her on her way. The princess was so unsteady that she required the help of two maids and a knight of the king's guard to get her safely back to her own apartments. It will never be known how the battle of wills between Queen Alison and her headstrong 15-year-old daughter might finally have resolved. Not long after the incident in Balon's bedchamber, as the queen was making arrangements for Viserra's departure from King's Landing, the princess traded clothes with one of her maids to escape the guards who had been assigned to keeping her out of mischief and slipped from the Red Keep for what she termed one last night of laughter before I go and freeze. 
Her companions were all men, two minor lordlings and four young knights, all green as grass and eager for Viserys' favor. One of them had offered to show the princess parts of the city that she had never seen. The pot shops and rat pits of Flea Bottom, the inns along Eel Alley and River Row where the serving wenches danced on tables, the brothels on the Street of Silk. Ale, mead, and wine all featured in the evening's frolics and Becerra partook eagerly. At some point, near to midnight, the princess and her remaining companions decided to race back to the castle. A wild ride through the streets of the city ensued, with King's Landers scrambling out of the way to avoid being run down and trampled. Laughter rang through the night and spirits were high, until the racers reached the foot of Aegon's high hill, where Viserys palfrey collided with one of her companions. The knight's mare lost his footing and fell, breaking his leg beneath her. The princess was thrown from the saddle headfirst into a wall. Her neck was broken. It was the hour of the wolf, the darkest time of night, when it fell to Sir Ryan Redwine of the Kingsguard to rouse the king and queen from their sleep to tell them that their daughter had been found dead in an alley at the foot of Aegon's high hill. Despite their differences, the loss of Princess Viserra was devastating to the queen. In the space of five years, the gods had taken three of her daughters, Dela in 82 AC, Alyssa in 84 AC, Viserra in 87 AC. Prince Balon was greatly distraught as well, wondering if he should have spoken to his sister less brusquely. The night he found her naked in his bed.